Hi, this is Dr. Brian McDonough, and welcome to the Dr. Brian McDonough Show. I'd ask you to watch this until its conclusion. It's important if you can. Uh, one of the things as a doctor that I've been able to do over the years is I get the opportunity to meet people when their masks are off. In other words, they're really sick, and they don't care about impressing you. They just want to feel better. Well, I actually have tried over the years to bring that into my television work many years at Fox in Philadelphia. And I've been recently going through some of the old stories. Most have been lost to time. They air once and they're gone. But some of them I've held on to. This particular story I want to re-show on this channel. In fact, more than two-thirds of the homicides in this country are the result of people using firearms. Tonight, in part two of his series, The Cost of Violence, Dr. Brian McDonough takes a look at the long-term effects of guns. Well, Rich, as you can imagine, the long-term effects can be devastating. I was sitting, eating chocolate ice cream on the boardwalk and a man came up behind me and shot me in the back of the neck. Eileen Myers did not know the man who shot her 18 months ago. Apparently she looked like his wife. The complete story is not known because within minutes the gunman walked down the boardwalk and shot himself. I'll tell you, it rips me apart. I'll you know, I, after all she's 33 years old and if I have to feed her it, you know, it just takes, takes a, it rips you. I feel like crying. You know what I mean? One act of violence can affect many. Since most of the folks that we're seeing with this problem are relatively young, many of their uh, parents are either at retirement age or approaching retirement age, and it, it disrupts several generations. So what does a person like Eileen do? How does she move on with her life? The first step is learning about her injury. Well, her injury uh, was a uh, partial interruption of spinal cord function at the C4 level. The spinal cord is a delicate network of nerves that sends electrical signals through the body. Without these signals, muscles don't work, vital senses like touch and pain perception disappear, and everything we take for granted fails us. Spinal cord injuries are a major result of our epidemic of violence. That's why Eileen's second step is so important. That step is rehabilitation. I think rehabilitation offers the only hope for these po uh, people because if they don't participate in a, an aggressive rehabilitation program, their medical needs will not be addressed. The problems that are known to be preventable won't be prevented. That's really good. Eileen's therapy includes regular stretching and strength testing of her muscles. Every potential sign of improvement needs to be recorded and there is a constant mm -hmm. battle to not lose any function that has already been salvaged. Eileen cannot walk, but she is being fitted for a new wheelchair that will respond to her commands. The focus of rehab is to try and make the patient as independent as possible. What Eileen and hundreds of thousands like her are just learning is the healing process from violence takes years. The nerve damage has affected Eileen's ability to control her bladder. Just one more problem she faces. But Eileen knows her battle is just beginning. They've been giving me good therapy here. Um, right now I can just move my right arm a little bit, and I can move my right leg a little bit. But they said um, it may take two or three years to get more return back. Last year in Philadelphia, there were more than 500 victims, people who died of gun violence. Back in 1995, when this story was shot, it was 432. But the real numbers about gun violence are not necessarily the people die. That is tragic. But the people who survive, what they are left to do with their lives. I found out that 15 years after she was shot, still in a wheelchair, she actually had developed a way to shoot digital photography, something that was her interest. She wrote about it, blogged about it. It was just wonderful to see that enthusiasm. I also found out in 2015 that she had passed away on October 16th, and it said she was predeceased by her parents. And that obviously was one of their biggest fears. Uh, she had lived at Inglis House, and um, I think I want to say something about her life because I really did not know her, but I think it's important. Her friend Carol Green Baker on her obituary said, Sweet dreams, Eileen. You are probably drinking your mom's delicious chocolate milkshake and dancing with your dad. You are my first friend ever, and I will always love you. This is the cost of gun violence. I don't think I need to say anything.